What's wrong, Ken? What's 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 different today than any other day? <laughs> oh. What's wrong? I got I got rabies or something. Oh and, no. Uh, man, sniffling or something. Oh so, man. Um, yeah. And um I've been I've been under the weather since about yesterday afternoon. So Oh heavens. Well I hope you get yeah. feeling better. Yeah. Yeah, well it's uh it, it's uh, after this zoom I think I'm gonna watch the back of my eyelids. That sounds good. Get you a good nail. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, this, this weather we've been having is kind of, you know, I mean, I'm, all of a sudden, you know, you're sitting there and it's an okay day. Next thing you know, it's raining outside. It's just weird. Uh, yeah, I think that has a lot to do with this. And finally, y'all, you can't find anybody that'll work or do anything. So supposedly after two months of trying to find someone to bring gravel to my um, ditch that is a driveway, he's supposed to be here like at two or three o'clock today, which is going to be exciting i can't wait to have new gravel in the yard i'm so excited but it's been hard finding someone to bring gravel out it's crazy well let's look at the market y'all what is going on um let's just go over it really quick lot the blue line if memory serves me correctly is the everybody see my screen okay we've been having technical issues the last couple of days but the blue line is the overnight high so we busted past that now, right? We busted past that. This is the hourly mid band that kind of keeps up, you know, it, it adjusts every hour to kind of go where the, it's kind of a little moving average, I guess. Got VWAP here. And here we've got our opening uh, range for the first 15 minutes. Let's see where it was. I think it was another tight seven point spread. I mean, it, it's, it's remarkable that the market's just doing the, same thing day after day after day after day. Oh, we got a divergence. Look at this, y'all. Do you see this? Check it out. Let me draw it. I know Stacy was interested in the day trading stuff. Here's what we look for, right? So you see, uh, what do we have here? We have a little uptrend. You don't got to draw these perfectly. I'm just drawing an uptrend. And then what do we have going on during the same period here? We've got a slightly downtrend. So what do you do when you see that? Well, you can rest assured that the E-minis will at, oh, get off there. The E-minis at some point will say, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're going up while the AD line is going down. And what happens? So if you saw that, then you could have scalped a few points there. How much is a point? $50 a point. You got two contracts, that's a hundred bucks, right? Get you two points, take risk out, put a stop. And then if that baby pops on back down here, you got a nice little game. So that's what you look for, little divergences. Um, and, that, and remember when I was when I was an active day trader, then we would, you know, look here first, eyes go to AD line. Then we would go to the e mini then I would actually make my trade on the NQ. I've got this to the E-minis now. And then finally we looked at, look at volume, just see what volume's doing. So that was one that was just kind of scripted there. You know, hey, this is going up, AD's going down. This was eventually going to go down and it did. That doesn't always work, but it does a lot. Hey, hold on one second. All right, so that's kind of cool thing to look at. So the market is up, you know, what, five points today. So it's not really doing anything at all. Uh, just same old, same old. So let's go and look at our market assumption by going to our volume profile, which gives us a nice little picture of what's going on. And what do we see? We see it bumping its head, don't we? We see it bumping its little head up at the fair value range. So it's almost as if it's saying, hey, wait a minute, Bobby drew a big green monster. We need to see if, uh, you know, we need to see if we're gonna be overbought or if we're gonna stay in the fair value range. So it wouldn't surprise us at all to see a pullback back into the, the you know, into this area here. 
here's one standard deviation above, standard deviation below. Here's the point of control for the last 10 days um, on this 30 minute chart. And it's kind of cool to see the 20 and 50 moving averages going upward, 200 moving average going upward. So it's all pointing up, but we may have some resistance right here. Now I was looking at another one, you know, uh, we've heard Ron Bertino tell us about the eight and 34 moving averages, right? So I pulled this chart up a while ago, which I thought was kind of cool. So look at this. The eight has been above the 34 the entire time until this little day right here. This little day right here. Well, it didn't go down beneath it though, did it? Still stayed above it. And then um, the eight finally goes down below. But look, remember he said, hey, it's bullish. If you go, uh, the eight goes above the 34. Well, I'll be dang. That was pretty uh, pretty clear right there, right? So, uh, all different kind of things that we can use to make our decisions on different things. It's just kind of cool looking at different, you know, moving averages and, and just seeing the crosses and what they're doing. And this is kind of cool, too, because our big green monster goes across all the charts, right? So you can see, even on this chart, you know, a little consolidation here little consolidation here, little struggle here. And uh, we are, on, this is SPX course, but now we're back in the fair value range on SPX. And it's a little different than the ES chart because uh, SPX doesn't have overnight. So it's kind of cool seeing all those things. Let's go back to the SPY on our volume profile. Just kind of see what we're doing. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's see what um, ES looks like. <clears throat> see what the futures look like on the volume profile. So they're in the fair value range. So we wouldn't expect them to have as much, you know, issue here. But uh, still, 20 and over the 50, over the 200. It's in a fair value range. So work on. So, you know, am I bearish? Am I bullish? Am I what am I? Well, I think it's just more of the same, more of the same fortunately or unfortunately. Now, the good part about that is look at this. Remember yesterday uh, morning, I got filled on my three or on my five to complete another tranche of the box one hedge. So now I'm only a nickel away from putting this entire next black one hedge on for an overall credit. That's not a big credit, but it's a little credit. And we showed what the credits can do, right? So let's go to the Analyze tab. Analyze tab, ES, single symbol. We'll say hide simulations. So we can see what our price slices look like. I think I still got that on 20% down. And here's how I set my price slices up. Nothing magic about it. Up five, up 10, up 15, down five, down 12, down 20 just the way I do it. So what happens in the event of a 20% down move in the ES uh, and volatility gets up to 75%, I'm up 60 grand. Now what about the entire, and that's a single symbol. Let's see if it'll look at our entire portfolio with all different kind of stuff in it. And then you'll see that we're up 57,000 with everything. All right, let me change this to groups. So we can look at our groups. Now, was it yesterday that I put on the, yeah, yesterday I put on another space trip trade. Ken, if you're not feeling good today, we may not need to do uh, movie night tonight. Unless I want to have movie night. Oh, do it. Okay. So movie night tonight, eight o'clock. Yeah. So, so don't forget that. We'll have movie night tonight and we'll keep exploring the space trip trade. So let's go here and let's look at uh, all groups. So we'll look at the space trip trade one. Take it off of the vol steps and we'll just do one expiration. 
our little booger right there. Looking mighty good, right? Today's the 13th. Let's move that forward. Says it's up $70 on the day. It's down $29 on the overall trade. And the thing that you'll notice when you start putting these space trip trades on, y'all, the your profit and loss will go nuts. These trades drive the uh, software crazy and it has a big fluctuation in, in values and you'll see your profit and loss go up a couple hundred, down a couple hundred, I mean, within seconds. So it's just one of those things you gotta watch. It's a slow moving trade. But what we hope to do, what we hope happens here, so we can spread her out a little bit so we can see her. Come here, little space trip trade, little space trip. I've been experimenting with the butterfly, trying to figure out exactly how they do it, and I still don't know how they do the butterfly. I used to do them. I was looking back through my notes, but I just, I like this better. I like the condor better. I don't care if it has more, um, if it has more um, legs, more commissions. I just like it. So we've got this little puppy on, if it'll, It'll go down here and stay down here. And what we'd like to see over time is it's got a uh, little bit of negative delta, it's got positive beta, and it's got uh, negative vega. So I want you to watch this. As, as time goes on, what happens is this purple line, which is your T0 line, that means it's today, right? It represents today's line. This little bluish line, teal, whatever that is, uh, represents expiration. Right? That's the line at expiration. So as you move, what you'll notice is this little puppy starts getting higher and higher and higher and higher, which is good because that means when price does move down, then this starts providing protection for you. So let's just move the calendar up a little bit and you just kind of watch what happens. Where are my glasses? Ah, I know. Hold on a minute. Did I make this? Uh, let me see if I can make this bigger. Application settings. Let's see. Where's it at? Look and feel. Look and feel is very large. Oh, if we go extra large. How about that? Does that make anything bigger? Apparently not on this page, does it? Well, I guess it does. That looks a little larger. All right, so let's move this down where you can actually see the hump. We want our camel, or our, uh, our whole little trade here to develop a hump. Can't believe I'm doing space trip trades. This is funny. Hold on. Pull this up here. Let's see, where's my little dates at? My date, my space trip trade, my date. Hold on. Where'd the date go? My date, my date, my date. I want to. It was just here. Go up. Let me go back to the regular look and feel. Change that back. Application settings. Look and feel. And we'll go very large. I don't know why it took my date away. When I went to extra large. Now I set my dates back. Where's my dang date, y'all? There it is. All right, it disappeared on me. All right, so what's the little uh, T0 line, a little purple line, as we move the date out into the future? Then cool stuff starts happening. Watch at this. I say cool stuff starts happening. How come my hump ain't getting bigger? What the crap? It's not showing my hump changing. What am I doing wrong? There it is. It's, just, it's, a, it's a delayed reaction. So you see what happens is the little puppy starts going up, right? So then as price comes down, if, if we were to get a market drop into this area, then you start showing a little profit. Look at there. On September 15th, if price goes here, then that uh, you're up $2,700. You start getting into that little, little tent area. 
So it's kind of cool. Now we've got a second space trip trade that we put on yesterday. So I got one on, and I got two on. There it is. If you look at it on September the 15th. So let's go back to today. Just kind of see how it looks. Go to today. And let's look at the price slices on it. A little bit of negative delta, positive theta, and negative vega. So very good. So the only thing that I have now, if we look at uh, all groups in the ES, let's see, let's just look at ES, single symbol. Um, let's go back to see what it looks like with four expirations. It'll be a conglomerated mess, but you kind of see them all working together there, right? Kind of see them all, then you see this little pickup here. That's our black swan hedges working. So let's look at it with the fall step. Four fall steps to make me feel a little bit better. If we get a market crash, how we doing? We're doing good. Change it from single symbol to your portfolio beta weighted. How you doing? You're doing pretty good. Uh, not quite as the lift, you know, with everything that we've got in there, but, you know, so it's a good approximation as to, as to what would happen in the event of a market crash. So, you know, really it's one of those things now, why, why did I ever start doing the black swan hedge? You got to keep in mind, I was searching y'all. I was searching for hedges. Why was I searching for hedges? I was searching for hedges because my main game is selling options. And remember, the main game is I hate calls. So my main deal, my main thing I like to do was to go in and sell options. All right. So, Rick, are you, Rick, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Rick, what are you doing now on your uh, Rick trade? Tell me about how, how wide are you going on the spreads and what, what – uh, what what premium are you able to collect right now on a RIP trade? So since the volatility went up the past couple of days, yeah. the uh, premium has been has been a lot better. I mean, I was so basically I'm doing a twenty wide mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, next expiration, and uh, sometimes I get twenty five cents. I think yesterday I got forty five cents as far as premium was concerned. So yeah. hopefully the uh, uh, it'll keep keep going up, but I'm just I'm just I'm just trekking on. That's my that's my basic income trade. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. And are you still going to about the five delta? Is that kind of where you're going? Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. I'm I'm going anywhere from five to six. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, so uh, what was it? Friday or Thursday of last week when we had that when we had that big drop. Uh, I think my my deltas uh, went up to uh, went up to thirty from five to 30, but it didn't go any higher than that. So, yeah, I mean, on, on paper, it was uh, red. There's no doubt about that, but um, uh, it bounced back the next day, just like it did the last time when the, when the Fed meeting came, we had the big down uh, the day after it bounced back and the Fed minutes last week were released and it, it went down the next day and it bounced back. So. It's uh, it's working it's working well so far. So Rick, what uh now you've got some black swan hedge, are you dabbling in that as well? Yes, sir. I have I have two full uh tranches of black swan hedge and I have half a tranche and then I have one space trip trade on mm -hmm. uh, so far. So yeah, I'm I'm delving into those as well. Good. So let me ask you this, Rick. When the market went down and your uh, RIC trade was being tested, how did the black swan hedge, did it pick up any, did it offset uh, what was going on with the, uh, uh, with your RIC trade? No, it, it didn't primarily. I, I, I think the black swan hedge wouldn't have kicked in until, uh, until it was a, a much larger down. Yeah. Uh, point wise and volatility went up a lot 
uh, now on the space trip trade, I put the space trip trade on the day before uh -huh. the market went down. And, I mean, that's one reason I got filled that night was because of the, of the down move of the market. But the space trip trade is really looking for a grind down and yep. not a overnight spike down. So, I mean, on the on the space trip on the space trip trade, um, I got in. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm up it, I'm up fifty bucks. So it, it it varies from down a hundred to up two hundred. So it, it, it just like you said, it it jumps. I mean, all my black swan hedges are green. Uh, but I'm not looking to them for income. I'm just looking for them for hedging. So basically, I guess to answer your question, the black swan hedge and the space trip trade really didn't really didn't help that one down day. I think they would really kick in when you have multiple down days uh, and uh, and volatility goes up over 20, 25, 30. Uh, that's when that's when it's going to kick in. So so my um, my uh, uh, spreads, put credit spreads. Yeah, it 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 would have hurt, but if if it had reached my short strike, I would have just rolled it out because it would have gone back up eventually. Or I would have, if I if I thought like this is quote a top unquote, then I would have probably rolled it out on the call side rather than the put side. Uh, and I haven't. I've never had to do that yet, but. Uh, I, I will one of these days. I have no doubt. Yeah, um, you know, and, and like you say, if 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 the market had dropped and blown past your strike, you know, you would have rolled out. But I, I think one of the things that was good about the uh, let's see, hold on. one of the things that was really good for me in selling puts and having the black swan hedge on. Let's go to the. Um, is it just gave me a little bit of confidence when I was selling my puts. Let's see, let's go to the, let's go out here, Black Swan Hedge and look at something when I first did this. So looking at the Black Swan Hedge, right now I've got uh, seven completed Black Swan Hedges. I've got three shorts. So I've got 24 shorts in the portfolio and I've got 35 long puts. So how much has this cost me as a hedge? And the spreadsheet keeps up with that for you. Uh, my total credit so far is 43.50. I have paid out to purchase the loans 48.51. So my hedge that has given me what, $60,000, worth of protection in a market crash has cost me $501. So I've got the rules here. Here's one of the things you want to pay attention to. This spreadsheet keeps up with the average days to complete the hedge. So if you sell the three, I kind of like to know on average, how long is it taking me to complete the hedge? Now that may be a little skewed down a little bit because you remember we bought the four trunches that one day on the same exact day that we uh, sold the short. So, you know, that, that may be a little bit more than that, but it keeps up with the average days to complete the hedge. We've not had a harvest, so it doesn't tell me uh, right now, it's just giving an error message. But once we start harvesting those shorts at 20 cents, it will uh, it'll keep up and, and tell me with how many days it takes to harvest. Now here's the cool thing. What I did is I wrote in permissions. You know, I have rules and then I have permissions. So, um, the number of additional BSH formation short puts permitted to sell. It says I can sell 18, right? There's no way that I'm going to do that because just because you have permission doesn't mean we place the trade. The analyze tab trade trumps everything. So we run everything with this black swan hedge through the analyze tab. And that's why I'm showing you guys that we camp out on that analyze tab, especially when it comes to space trip trade into the black swan hedge because we don't want to just blindly say, hey man, I can sell 18 puts, you know. So we we don't do that. Now, I was also selling naked income puts in ES as well. And it says here that I can sell negative 21. In other words, dude, you cannot sell any, right? 
So it, it keeps up with all this, but remember everything goes by the permissions. So the cool thing is because I've only got three unmatched shorts that if the market were to drop significantly today, tomorrow, the next day, I could actually sell six puts, right? I can actually, we tested it the other day, but I would test it again before I did it. We could actually start increasing our structure. I could actually sell six next time and then move this up to a 610. Or I could sell three and you know wait a couple of days and if the market continues to go down, I could sell three more. So instead of putting all your eggs in that one day basket, you can mix it up and sell it in two different, uh, uh, you know, if you think the markets go down. So, so now we're spending a lot more time focusing on where we think market direction's going, what's going on in the market. Uh, we're looking at, um, and of course, SPX doesn't have volume, so you won't see volume on that. Question, just, Bobby. Yeah, that's one. Does it really matter how many puts you sell? <clears throat> I mean, what you're trying to do is cover the cost of the puts you buy, is that correct? That is correct. So yeah, with the puts that I sell, we're selling those and they're financing the puts that we're buying so that we are net long puts, correct. So if I wanted to buy five puts, mm -hmm. what if I sold 10? You know, as long as I collect enough total premium to cover the five that I want to buy. So if you want to sell Okay, well, one thing that we I'm do- I'm just asking, does it really matter what the ratio is as long as you're collecting more? Okay, so, you know, the, the ratio um, that Ron teaches and has, you know, told us that we need to keep is that three to five ratio. Now, most people who do, you know, back put ratio spreads probably do a one to two. Ron's testing found that the three to five was best. And, and that's really what I'm comfortable with, you know, based on, I, I trust Ron's testing of that. And I like keeping things in that 0.6. So three divided by five is 0.6. So I like doing it three, five, six, 10, uh, 12, 20. Those are the ratios that I do it in. So I hope I answered your question. But yeah, and you know, people have said, hey, what about on an update, I sell the 10 loans. I mean, I buy the 10 loans or buy the five loans. Well, you can do that and then wait for a down day to sell the shorts. Now you can do that. The only problem is if you do that and you don't ever get a down day, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to, to finance those. So I've always been more comfortable in selling the shorts first then um, uh, buying the loans, you know, when I can do so for an overall credit. Now, I will say this, if any of you watch that, and Stacy, thank you for sharing the video that you shared. I got halfway through it before they, they pulled it down. But if you watch the video that I shared with Tony from Mexico on with uh, Baby Bat and Mike Butler, did any of you watch that? It's really good. Um, what Tony was doing in SPY, I don't know if you called it, but he was doing a three, five ratio and he was bringing it up, you know, for Mike and baby bat to consider a three, five ratio. And he was selling three, like we would, you know, 90 to 120 days, maybe something out like that. And then buying loans that were higher than the shorts or equal or higher than a short. So let's just say we sold a, for sake of argument, we sold a, a 3,500 put. Then he may be buying the 3,550 puts, but instead of one expiration closer, you know, one shorter dated expiration, he may be putting that, buying those at 14 or 21 days out. Now, what does that do? Now, the cool thing about that, I don't know if you thought about it, but he's saying, so for example, if, if we know that on average, it's taking us 17 days to fill our loan, you could spend a lot less money 
by buying the loans if you bought them closer in a shorter expiration. God, I don't even know if that even sounds right. So if I, if in other words, if I sell the 3,500s, I could buy the 3,550 a lot cheaper if I did it only 14, 21 days out than if I bought them 90 to 120 days out. Those options are going to be a lot cheaper. And you may only need that insurance for a couple of weeks until you could fill your loans. So, I mean, all different ways that you, and, and Dwayne, I, I, I appreciate what you're doing. You're thinking, right? And that's what we're doing. We're thinking about different ways to use the ebb and flow of the market, the ups and downs of the market to get into these various trades. So I think you're on the right path. So let's, let's look, for example, now I don't have currently in this portfolio, I closed them all for a profit, but y'all recall one of our biggest money makers this year is the micros. Now here's what's sweet, y'all, what's this? So, you know, you said, Bobby, I hadn't sold any micros because, you know, I'm scared of naked options. I'd rather do spreads and, you know, I might lose my butt on the micros. Well, you could go out uh, close to 60 days without going over is where I would always go. My spreadsheet would probably tell me to go to the 10 Delta. So I go to the 10% probability of being in the money and I can sell 38.90 in the micros, right? Now check this out. Zero buying power. Zero buying power. Why zero buying power? Well, because I have all these black swan hedges on, right? This is something I can collect $78 in, in credit and a zero buying power effect. So let's think about it for a second. Now, one of the interesting things is, is how many could you do without, you know, if I did five, what would be the buying power requirement on five? Let's see if I did five. Five of those, let's confirm in the sin. Zero buying power. Bring in a credit of 471.18. Okay, well, what if we did 10 of them? Well, 10 would be like selling a E-mini contract, right? So you'd probably rather sell an E-mini instead. So if we sell 10 of them, what's my buying power effect? Wow, $91. So I bet if I take this to nine, let's move that to nine, and my buying power effect is 81.50. So they're charging me a little bit, right? So the cool thing is now you right click on this and you go, okay, I'm scared to sell naked puts. Can you imagine selling nine micros? That's a, you know, well, let's analyze it. So you go to analyze tab. And all right, so let's see, we'll do beta symbol. Yes. Hold on. And let's do hide positions. So we'll see our only thing. Is this our no, we got the SPX. Hold on one second. Let me get it all in there. So let's delete the Rick trade out there. So this should be our only trade. Our only trade. Yep. Okay. So here, let's do this now. Let's go uh, portfolio beta weighted. That's fine. Now let's show all. This is so cool, y'all. Hope y'all love this. Show all. And now let's look, uh, let's take everything off other than our, let's take all the BAME stuff off. Who knows what BAME would do in the event of a, uh, of a down move. So let's get everything selected. Now let's take all the BAME stuff off. How do you do that? Just uncheck market. So let's go down. There's all our ES trades or the MSA. Let's take the silver off. Let's take the junk off. Let's take the O off. The TQs, UBT, UCO, UDAO, UGLY, ULE, UMDD, and the UPRO, and the ERTI. Heck, we'll even leave our fix on. How about that? Now, now let's go and let's look and see what happens. 
All right, so now we've got our pie slices. We've got all of our stuff here. So now here's what here's what it would look like, right? With these nine, if, if we go down 20%, it says we're going to be down $17,000 and it's going to use buying power $40,000. That looks terrible. Looks horrible if we go down 20%, right? But check this out. If you go down 20% and volatility gets to 75, you're still up $35,000. Keep in mind, this is including those nine short puts, right? If you're down uh, 20% and the market's, uh, I, the IV is at 60%, you're up 16,000. If it's only up 45, you're still, you know, at $627 profit, but I, it would be well higher than 30, right? So, you know, you're up 16 to $35,000 and you've got nine negative, you know, I mean, nine short, um, nine short micros. So the cool thing is you go in here and you go, wow, I can, you mean I can sell? Yeah, you can. All right, now let's try something else. Let's say, can you, what could you do? You say, if I sold a full little uh, ES contract, let's try that. Since we're nine, we know we could do 10 of those to equal, I mean, one of those to equal. So let's go closest to 60 without going over. So we'll go 49, let's sell a 10 Delta. 10 Delta, duh, 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 duh. All right. Let's try that and see what that looks like. All right, so here you go. Let's sell a 10 delta there. Now we'll analyze that trade, right click. Analyze trade. All right, let's go check this one out. Oh, wow. Now stuff looks different, doesn't it? Make sure also you want to change this to S and not just that particular option expiration so it picks up all your trades yes i say yes boy here we go come on all right so let's see what this looks like yeah now i've got all my price slices now we've got the nine let's take those off let's take the nine micros off and now that should have my Single cell nine is off. So it should have, there, that one there. So now let's see what this looks like on the analyze tab. So am I still protected in the event of a crash? 20% down, 20% down, and I, IV is up 75%. I'm still up $32,000. Now here's the cool thing. You go, man, what if I do a E mini? What if I do two of those, man? What if I do two of those? Let's see what that looks like. Two of those. Two of those, and you're down 20%. Well, you might be down $15,000, right? You might be, I mean, you know, you may be protected if it goes up 75, if it goes down 60, you're down $15,000. So in other words, you may have permission to do something, but the analyze tab trumps everything, y'all. So I simply know I cannot sell more than one ES position. So what I'm better to do, what I'm better to do today is this is I could easily say, wow, well, you know, if, if, if I'm protected in the event of the crash, why in the name of the Lord would I not sell a micro? So let's delete this. We don't want to put all of our eggs in that one expiration back basket. So all of a sudden we go, okay, what if I just sold one today? So let's move that up to one. Okay, so selling one, right? So let's see what that looks like. So now you go down 20% and volatility goes up to 75, then you're up $65,000. Okay, what if I don't sell that one? Uh oh, hold on, I didn't have it clicked. You're up 65,000 without it. What are you up with, with it? You're up $62,000. 
What was I up without it? I'm up $64,000. So let me ask you a question. Why would I not sell a put in the micros? So keep in mind, now, you may be just running the black swan hedge for a profit. Okay, I got it. If you're doing that, I would do them for a bigger credit. So instead of me, I'm doing it for a hedge. So I'm trying to do mine at a break even, right? I want this thing to fill and fill quickly, as quickly as possible so that I don't have a debit for it, but I'm not, uh, you know, paying anything for it. I'm getting a small credit by filling at $1.70. Now, if you're doing an income version, maybe you're moving this down to $1.50 or $1.35, whatever you're, you're doing, if that's your income portion. Now, the cool thing is, what could you do if you're running this as an income trade? Well, keep in mind, you've got shorts already. So if this is your income, you could say, well, heck, I don't even want to fill it. My gosh, I'm up 200 bucks on the trade of me selling three shorts. Close it, baby. Take you $195. Wait till another down day. Sell some more. And so there's all ways to do this, right? Tons of different things for you to consider in this thing. And all we're doing, keep in mind, all we're doing is we're using the ebbs and flows of the market to make our decisions, right? Market's up, we can do something. Market's down, we can do something, uh, you know. So right now, I think I am definitely going to uh, sell, where's my little analyze tab? I'm gonna sell a micro. Is it still at 16? Yep, it's still at 16. So let's go confirm and send. Let's bring in $78.53. Why? Because I don't have, I mean, they're showing zero buyer effects for a reason. Why is it zero buyer effect? Because I am hedged to the to the teeth. Boy, I am ready to go. Ready to sell. Boom. Sell it. All right. So we got filled in that one. So very cool when you start thinking about those things. And remember, our micros is our most profitable thing we've done all year, right? Those and things. And now, am I comfortable selling, doing a rick trade if I wanted to? Sure. Because I know that if we get blown out past that, that I'm going to be doing just fine. And it keeps me away from those nasty, nasty, nasty calls because, you know, I don't have to sell, I don't have to sell the calls. You know, normally... If people are hedging, what do they do? You know, you're selling a put, how do you hedge? Well, you could sell a call to give you a little negative deltas, or you could buy a put. Well, we're buying puts, but remember, we don't buy anything unless we can sell something to finance it. Don't do that. Don't just buy puts. Don't just buy, you know, protection. Don't just buy what we're selling stuff and I would even say, even on the VIX hedge, we're doing that. We're paying out for the VIX hedge, aren't we? But what are we doing? We're in the business of selling options. That's what you and I landed on. Hey, we're, we're, we're option sellers. That's where we end up. So if we're going to sell some, let's make sure that we have protection to the downside. And you and I, if you're doing the Black Swan hedge, you're doing the space trip trades, man, we are definitely protected to the downside. And we don't have negative delta. We still have positive delta. So as long as the market keeps going up, man, we're looking, we're looking good, right? We're looking good. All right. So now let's go back to our groups. Let me group everything. Okay. I've got everything together here. So we got VIX hedge. We got space trip trades. We got um, unallocated was, that's just an order. So now we need to move that and we'll just call him. We'll move those. We'll just call those micros. We'll know what that means. Micros. Micro. We'll just say micro short puts. How about that? Trying to get better on my description so we know exactly what we're doing. So now we've got our micro short puts. We've got two space trip trades. We've got black swan hedges. We've got a VIX hedge. So we're looking really, really good. All right. Now. I've called this BAME, haven't I? And y'all, I tell you, and I know y'all are nerds like me, but I'm laying there this morning, I can't sleep, and it's 
and I go, man, Bob, we know that the BAME is working great. Look at the BAME, man. This account, I dare say it, is at an all-time high, I would think, today. $116 up. It's, uh, you know, up $8,000 for the year. This The BAME is doing great. BAME is doing good. But at the same time, I kept thinking, I need to paper trade AIM. Because I need to, I need to paper trade AIM, right? Because AIM, how am I going to know how AIM is doing if I never do anything with it? So I started thinking today, and that's the problem. I get in trouble when I'm thinking, right? So I've been updating the Bain pretty often, you know, doing all the stuff in Bain. Bain's working great, but I go, I wonder how it would work if we were doing AIM, if we were actually doing the AIM stuff. So if you've got this spreadsheet. You've got the BAME stuff and you've got the AIM stuff. And I thought, gosh, maybe I need to, you know, just see how this thing is doing. So this is telling me on the AIM side of thing, in this particular account is saying buy three shares of AG, AGQ. Why? Well, I would imagine that our friend AGQ has gone down, right? And that's what AIM is different than BAME. BAME would say, man, you need to buy or you need to to sell, let's say AGQ. What is it telling me to do? AGQ. Bain, AIM is telling me to buy shares. So AIM normally tells you to buy when things go down. So let's see if that's right. Well, I'll be down. Looks like AGQ has gone down 0.62%. Look at that. So the AIM is saying buy. Now, if I were to put this into Bain, Bain would probably say sell it, baby. Look, it's under the 20, it's under the 50. And it's tagging the 200, sell that crap. But isn't it interesting that the aim is just the opposite? And I started thinking, well, maybe I need to give aim a shot. You know, maybe I need to give aim a shot and let it, instead of working BAME in this account, maybe I work aim in this account, and BAME in the other account. So this one tells me to buy three shares of AGQ. Okay, let's do that. AGQ. Now, I know what you're thinking, Bobby, you don't even have live quotes on your thing i don't i gotta do though why because i've got a corporate account and i pay for data y'all you don't want to do that you never want to pay for data like i am like i do just keep your oh man what is it hold on all right so all i gotta do is go over here and go agq what's the quote and then i got live quotes here AGQ is at 55.83. This is telling me to buy three shares of it. So let's go to this account. Let's buy three shares of AGQ. Trade AGQ. AGQ. But don't y'all think that's a neat experiment to have BAME and AIM going side by side? I think that'd be neat. I was going to paper trade it, and I just hate paper trading. God, I hate it. And if you're paper trading, I'm not throwing off on you. I paper traded for a long, long time, and I love it. But it's just I'd rather commit capital, and I'll take the blow if it if it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if I bum on something, I'm good. It's not going to bother me at all. So let's go to AGQ, and it says to buy three shares. All right, so it's at 45.85. Boy, I'm going to get a better – price and I got here. So I'll buy at 45.85 is the current price. Things dropping, baby. And let's buy three shares. Buy three. Let's see if we get the field on three shares. Chum on. I say chum on. 25.85. 45 That's it. Let's see, the ask is 45.86. Oh, we got filled. We got filled. I just heard it go through. Boom. All right, so we're filled on that. All right, let's go back here and see what else it says we need to do. So, and the good thing is, remember, I'm trying to go to a more laissez faire. Yeah, I will share this recording. I didn't share yesterday's because of, we got kicked out, remember? And it was really, really short. So I will definitely share this one today. Um, so, um, so we did that. Okay, so TQQQ must be up because this puppy's telling me to sell two shares. Well, let's see if that's indeed the case. Let's look at TQQQ. 
Remember, aim takes profits when things go up. So look at this. My, 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 my. TQQQ. Right, let me see what the price of TQQQ is. All right. So it's telling me to book profits, Bob. Oh, also, this would be better for you to run AIM instead of BAME if you are not doing mark to market accounting or if you are not a, um, um, if you don't have tax trader status. And that's beyond the scope of anything that I know to tell you what to do. All I know is I have mark, I, I utilize mark to market accounting. So I don't have wash sale rules. If you're using BAME, you can, may have wash sale issues if you're buying and selling within 30 days and you have a loss on something. Now with AIM, you shouldn't be taking a loss on anything because you're buying low and selling high. So this thing is telling me to sell two shares of TQQ. Why? Because AIM says, well, if it goes up, you need to book some profits, Bob. So let's trade that puppy. Let's trade TQQQ and let's sell our two shares. Let's book some profits. All right, so we're gonna sell two shares. So we click on the bid and it's currently at 133.77. How do I know that? I'm looking at the actual price because I don't have the actual, I could pay for it, but I'm cheap and I don't wanna pay for it here. I'm paying for other data, right? I have to pay for data. Y'all don't have to, y'all getting a live quote. So it's 133.77. Let's see if we can book that. Oh heck, I almost sold a hundred shares. I hope that was Rick coming to my, Rick, was that you fishing say, Bobby, you idiot? Yeah, I was trying to say, don't do that. Yeah, thank you. All right, so I think I'm selling two shares, let's see. Sell two shares, okay, let's go back. That got me all worried now. All right, let's see if I get filled on my selling of two shares. I think I did. Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. Okay, what else does it say? Well, it says, Bob, Oh, Yuko, oil is out of control, baby. It says sell five shares. Let's look at it. Let's just make sure. I like to make sure my things are working correctly, right? So Yuko is my oil. Oil is up, baby. Look at there. And isn't it cool that my spreadsheet is saying, sell it, baby, sell it. Now, what would Bain be telling me? Bain would be telling me, buy it, baby, buy it. It is hot. Look, it is it is oversold, right? And it's above all three of these averages. It is hot, but AIM is a little more conservative. AIM says, book some, uh, book some profit, Steno. All right, so Yuko, gotta make sure I know what I'm doing. Yuko says, sell five shares. Okay, so I'll do it. Sell five shares of Yuko. So let's get that down, Yuko. We're going to sell, so we're going to click on the bid. And Yuko is trading at, Yuko is trading at, on the bid, 81.82. 81.82. Well, let me check that too. Five shares. It did say sell five, make sure. Sell five. You got it together, Bob. It's a good day. So let's do that. Let's sell our five shares. And I think we're filled. Boom, chicka boom, chicka booka booka boom. There we go. Now, I want to show you this, and let's make sure our spreadsheet is working. So we've got filled on these four orders, right? We've got a micro that we sold, and we've made some aim changes to our thing. So let's enter those trades in. Let me show you in case you're running aim or bain. AIM's the easiest one to run, right? You don't got to be a big green monster. You ain't got to do anything. You just take profits. When things are up, and you buy things when things are down. So we're going to give it a shot. Now, this should do this. Let's see. Right. So here's my spreadsheet. So let's see what we did. We traded UCO. We traded TQs. And we traded AGQ. Just those three, okay. And then Yuko, we sold five. And TQs, we sold two. And AGQ, we bought three. 
So then I just go 7, 13, 21. 7, 13, 21. 7, 13, 21. And then I put the price in there that we did each one of those. And the weird thing is, Thinkorswim does four digits. So I changed this to, to show four digits. That's kind of crazy, right? So in UCO, we did, uh, our price was 81.8501. Um, TQ's 133.7801. And on the other one, we did, uh, what was it? AGQ was 45.85. Now, here's what I got to think about. Is this new capital? Is it rebalancing or is it a new underlying? Now, you notice when I'm running BAME, I always say yes, 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 yes. But this is not new capital and it's actually not rebalancing. Right? We're not rebalancing and it's not a new underlying. So I'm going to put no here. What about that? Never done that before. Feels strange because we're just running aim. So you put no if it's just aim. All right. And it keeps up with all this little stuff. How your streak, right? Your streak of, you know, the last four trades that I've made in TQs, I've been selling. The last two trades in silver, I've been buying. So it keeps up with all that. And then we have a governor. Beth, will you lock them out for a second? And we, um, we have a governor that kind of slows it down to preserve cash on the way down, right? If things are, if we're buying when it goes up or down and we're selling when it goes up, this kind of gives us a little bit of a governor so we don't run out of money. All right, so this is really, really good. Now, when we go back to our AIM dashboard, check what happens. This is no action, no action at all. And the cool thing about AIM is you could do it, you can update this once a week, you can do it once, a, you know, a month. You know, that's what Lucello did. He did it once a month. But the cool thing that I like doing is since I've got this handy dandy little spreadsheet, that keeps up with everything. It automatically brings prices in, it automatically tells me what to do. And once I do it, it confirms that I did what was correct. So now you see the underlines that I'm at. We took a little bit of TQQ off the board. We took the profit. Uh, we took a little bit of UCO off the board. And uh, what did we do? We bought some silver. So it kind of keeps up with everything. But I thought it would be kind of cool if we kind of compare and say, what's doing well, right? How is Bain doing versus AIM? And two, I know that this is, is hard for most people. I mean, you know, to come in here and to do all of this, unbelievable. You got a job, you got a life, right? And this is Bobby's little Bane that's working really well. You know, we're up $8,000 in this account. But, you know, how would AIM have worked compared to this? So I need to have, you know, I know how SPY works in compar comparison with it, right? So right now in this account, I am underperforming SPY, right? As we're getting this account pivoted toward that. SPY's up there and I'm down here. So now we're making this little, little one change where we're actually showing that I'm doing uh, AIM in this account. I think I like that, I like it a lot. Cause this is, this is difficult, but I'm still gonna run BAME, which is Bobby's goofy stuff in the other camp. Why am I going to do that? Because dang, if it ain't working good. Look at this. Dang, if it ain't working good. Here we go. All right, up $8,100 since March the 26th. All right, good session, y'all. I will go whoop a kid or two and get them out. And I will see y'all tonight at eight o'clock and we'll still be covering the uh, space trip trade tonight. So I will see y'all eight o'clock. See ya. Y'all have a great day.